In this video, I'm going to show you everything you need to know to start animating in Krita 5, as well as all the new animation features that make Krita even better for 2D animation. To start, we need to go to krita.org and download the newest version of Krita by going to the download tab. Select the version for your computer and once the download completes, open up the exe file. Go through the instructions of installation. If you already have an older version of Krita installed, it will ask you to uninstall the older version. Once the Krita installation is complete, open up Krita and click the new file button. The average video for YouTube is 1920 by 1080 and the average video for Instagram is 1080 by 1920. You can easily change the format from vertical to horizontal by clicking these two buttons. Once you have your size selected, click Create. Krita offers different program layouts based on the way that you want to use the software. For animation projects, you can go up to the top right corner and select Animation Workspace. If your version doesn't include workspace defaults, go to Settings, Dockers, and select Animation Timeline, Animation Curves, and Onion Skins. You can save any layout you like by going back up to Workspace and naming it and then saving it. In Krita, towards the top we have the toolbar. The most important tool for animation is the brush tool so that you can draw all of your 2D art animation. There are also multiple variations of the brush tool such as the circular and rectangular tool. For quick manipulations, we also have the transform tool, which enables you to rotate, skew, and move different parts of your drawing. If you only want to move a certain piece of your drawing, you can use one of the selection tools. To remove a selection, make sure to click anywhere on the canvas while using a selection tool. Another very useful tool would be the fill tool. One recommendation I have for using the fill tool is to create a second layer and put it underneath your line art layer and then go to tool options and change the grow selection so that it doesn't have any of this weird pixely anti-aliasing which is like where there's a gap between the color and the line. Now for a quick summary of the layers tab. To add a new paint layer, for your animation, click the little plus button right there. You can also duplicate a certain layer with a double page button here or right clicking and click duplicate layer or mask like that. You can move the layers within their order by clicking these up and down arrow keys to move them to the top or bottom. And the trash button over here obviously means delete the selected layer. The concept of layers is basically taking pieces of paper and stacking them on top of each other to easily manipulate each object. The animation timeline is also pretty simple. Here we have the playback buttons which play your animation. Here's the stop the animation which resets it back to where you have your mouse on the timeline. Here you have the next frame button. You can like be a little more precise with moving back and forth in your animation. And these buttons here mean you can skip to the next or previous keyframe on your timeline. This number here displays which frame is currently selected. Here you have the drop frames, which means basically when you're animating and you're trying to play back your animation, if your computer can't handle it, you just click that and it will skip the ones that your computer can't render at that second. This is a playback speed, so if you want to just quickly run through your animation or slow it down, you can. Here is the add blank frames. This is how you actually animate. Here's duplicate frames. So right now I'm going to duplicate this drawing here so I can animate that. And then here is remove keyframes without moving anything around. So basically, it's not going to slide your keyframes over on the timeline. Here's the onion skin menu. So basically this hides or shows the onion skin tab over here, which I'll explain in a second. Here's the animation settings menu where you can choose the start and end of your animation as well as the frame rate. Typical frame rate for animation is 24 frames per second. Usually you animate on every other frame if you don't want to draw every single frame, but leave it at 24 so that you can have a little more space to work with to get smoother animation. This button here is auto frame mode, so basically when you have it selected, it builds a new frame when you draw on a certain place in the timeline. You don't have to create a new frame every single time. You can have it as either create a blank frame so that when you draw a new spot on the timeline, it gives you a brand new canvas or it'll duplicate the previous one and then just add on. You can also add new layers inside the animation timeline itself just by clicking this button here. New layer, you can also remove layers and then you can pin existing layers that are up here that are not showing on the timeline. So if you don't want to display all your layers, you can be selective on which ones you want to show in the timeline to actually be animated. 
This here is the audio button, so you can add audio to your animation just by going through your files and selecting one and then adding it. You can also choose to mute the audio or remove the audio or change the audio volume. This here is a little timeline zoom, so you hold on to it and then you can make your keyframes bigger or smaller, depending on your preference. If you only want to work on one layer at a time, say you have like five layers or whatever, here you can hide certain layers by cl clicking this little eye button. You can lock layers so you no longer can work on it in case you know you don't want to mess up your artwork. Here you can turn on the onion skin. You have to actually create a frame before you can turn on onion skin just in case you can't find the light bulb right there. Now onto the onion skin tab. You can select how many frames before and after you would like to show in your animation timeline on the screen on the canvas here and the intensity by messing with these little sliders right here and also the tint of the color that displays on your canvas. You can also organize the onion skin currently being used by different frame colors. So like over here, you select a certain color that you want to display. To choose a different brush, go to Settings, Dockers, and Brush Presets. From there, you should have many decent default brushes to choose from. The one I typically recommend for line art is Basic 1. To sketch your art, Krita offers some pencil brushes as well. If you don't own a drawing tablet and would like some smoothing for your brushes, select any brush tool, go to Tool Options, go to Brush Smoothing, and select either Weighted or Stabilizer. Play with the settings to make sure the smoothing fits your needs. Specifically for mouse users, I recommend choosing Stabilizer. Play with the delay and sample count till the settings give you the best combination of smoothing and control. Now onto keyframes. There's a create blank frame option, which is one frame to a reel of individual frames that create the video. There's also a duplicate frame option, which copies the previous frame, but allows changes to be made without affecting the first drawing. You can also do clone frame, which means whatever changes you make to that frame will be applied to the original. But if you want to separate them after, you're done making changes, you can right click and select make unique. You can also create multiple frames by right clicking the timeline and going under keyframes and selecting multiple frames and specifying how many frames you want to be made and if you want it to be every, every other or every third frame, etc, etc. The remove and pull option deletes a selected keyframe and moves all the following frames over one. The insert hold frame is basically the opposite of a pull frame, where it adds an extra space between the frames, making it hold on the first frame longer. You can also make a selection of multiple frames and copy or cut them, then paste them where you want them on the timeline. To start creating your own animation, I generally recommend starting things off with a rough sketch of what you would like to animate to help plan the timing, the design, and the motion without wasting time fixing mistakes on a fully drawn out sequence. Once you have your first sketch done, you can decide to either create a second sketch, which would be a little more refined and complete, or if you feel confident with your first sketch, then move on to the line art stage. When drawing your line art, make sure you create a new layer above the sketch layer. For coloring your animations, I recommend creating a layer beneath the line art layer. Otherwise, if you want to use the paint bucket fill tool, it leaves either a transparent outline or a jagged color fill in. If you want to add shadows and highlights to your animations, creating separate layers for each enables you to better edit the highlights and shadows and keep the shapes more consistent with onion skin. The new animation curves found in Krita 5 can be used to either change opacity or position of drawings using keyframes. To add a keyframe tweening to a layer, click on the little arrow next to the layer plus button and select add transform mask to change position. Go to the animation curves docker, there you will see lines that determine the values of the transform layer. First, I'll show you the transform mask. Select the transform tool, pick a place on the timeline where you want your first keyframe, click this keyframe button, click the second position on the timeline where you want the movement to stop, add another keyframe, and using your transform tool, 
move the object to its final destination. The opacity curves is similar. Simply select the layer you want to animate the opacity for. For this example, I'm going to have it start at full opacity, then fade out, and then come back in. For the first keyframe, I'll have the opacity at default, then I'll move down the timeline and pull the values down to fade the image. Then I select the end position and push the opacity all the way back up. To render your animation, Creative requires the open source engine FFmpeg to convert your images into video. You can go into the description and find the link and download the latest build for your operating system. To do this the easiest way, save this file to a place that it won't get deleted. Once you download and unzip the folder, click onto the folder and find ffmpeg.exe. In Krita, go to the top, go to File, Render Animation, and Video, and find where it says FFmpeg. To embed FFmpeg to Krita, either copy the location link or go back into Krita and click on the little folder icon next to the FFmpeg and find the file and select it. When rendering your animation, you can choose the first and last frame for your video, as well as the width and height. You can also alter the frame rate. Under Render As, you can choose the file type, and then below that, you can choose where you want to save your video. And to start the render, click OK. And congratulations, you have just rendered your first animation. If you want to share your projects made using this tutorial, just let me know down in the comments and I'll check out your channel, or you can join my Discord server. And if you have any questions, just let me know down below.